this is Jane Talbot. It is day four of my writing immersion adventure and today, yep, I feel totally immersed and I've actually started writing. I've done a little bit more research about the haiku form and its history. And do you know what? Absolutely fascinating. So when people talk about haiku, the short version explanation is that it's an ancient form of Japanese poetry. And yet, when they describe the history, they only go as far back as the 17th century. So one of the poets most strongly associated with the haiku form is a guy called Basho. And during the 17th century, there was a collaborative linked verse form of poetry. There was the Renga, which was the formal linked poetic form, and then the Renku, or the Haikai no Renga. I think that's how you say it. And this was a form of poetry where someone started off. Now, if you started off, that's like getting pole position in a Formula One race. That's the most important verse. And it was called the Hoku, the opening stanza. And that had 17 syllables in a 575 format. So you can already see a Hoku has the same structure as a Haiku. And some other key characteristics too, in terms of making references to nature and also having a cutting point in the poem, a shift, a division of the stanza. So when the first stanza was done, that got handed over to someone else and they would do the second stanza and then it would get handed back. And so it was a collaborative venture. It was fun, it was intellectually inspiring and it could get a bit rude and naughty at times. That was the spirit of the day. And at that time, the hoku actually then became a standalone form in its own right. And another poet and critic in the 19th century then started calling this standalone form haiku instead of hoku. And then the use of the word hoku for a standalone poem fell out of use. And you could think, you know what, that's that. And I'm now connected with a form of writing that is been around for more than 300 years. Great. Yeah, but the story goes a little bit further than that because if you dig around, so for me personally, being connected to a form that has been fascinating to human beings for so long is what fascinates me. What is it in this form that is so compelling? And I have to say, having written 32, 31 haiku so far, I I'm breathing them out now. I don't think about them. I love the rhythm of them. I love the association with nature and my own nature involved with them. They've become natural. So surely they must be older. But somebody must have been doing it first. And then I stumbled across an earlier form called Tanka. So Tanka is a short form of poetry. It was a kind of rebellion or a revolution that took place and during the some people say seventh century some people are called eighth century the this tanker form emerged and instead of having these very long poems they had short poems and the tanker form is five seven five seven seven it actually means short song and like with the linked verse form they had tank offs they would have competitions and the tanker form was used for kind of romantic poetry. It was a great way of sharing emotions. Now, what's really interesting for me about the tanker form, no, not only has it got this divided syllable or on, as they called in Japanese structure, 57577. So you can feel the rhythm already coming, but there's also a pivot point in there, which is just like the cutting point in a haiku, a point at which, as far as tanka is concerned, the general becomes a sp specific, the what is being described becomes personal. And for me, that is the essence of haiku. So I could say, yep, yeah, haiku has its obvious roots in the hoku, 
But for me, it stretches right back to the tanker, hundreds of years beforehand, and being connected to a tradition that already recognised the significance of form and structure for containing words and emotions. But also this idea of pivot that gets you to re-engage with the poem and its meaning in new ways, that's what's exciting to me, and I love the fact it's been going on for ages. Brilliant, see you tomorrow.